Hey guys, it's Destiny, and today we're going to be going over Aventurine's light cone, his signature light cone at that. And I'll be giving you guys my thoughts if you guys should go for this light cone or if you should possibly just stick with an alternative instead. So we'll be looking over the light cone value. I'll also go over his kit a bit to see how it could synergize very well. And before we get into it, let me know in the comments down below a team or character you've been playing recently that you've been having a lot of fun with. And if you guys do enjoy videos like these, do make sure to subscribe, leave a like to support the video, and now let's get straight into it. So as we can see, here is the light cone preview for Aventurine here. And we're just going to be taking a look at his signature light cone, which I personally really like the design of this light cone. It looks really cool just with all the cards, the chips, everything just floating around him. And it looks like he's sitting in like such a fancy chair. So overall, I'm a huge fan of the signature light cone art. And if we take a real quick look at the stats, it definitely has a good amount of defense for sure. And as from what we've seen, just based off of his kit a little bit, as well as what the signature light cone will do, defense is going to be really, really nice for Aventurine right here. So let's take a look right now at the light cone ability. So it is all in and it increases the wearer's defense by 40%, which that's a hefty amount of defense for sure, which is really good for him in general, just when it comes to his shields being more beefy. So this is going to help out quite a lot to ensure that your shields are strong enough to withstand quite a lot of hits. And what's even better about this is when the wearer provides a shield to an ally, which keep in mind that his shields are pretty constant. He's going to apply the shield at the beginning of the battle, but then whenever he uses his follow-up attack, in a sense, he has a cycle of getting back the shields without actually having to use too many skill points based off what we've seen so far and know so far. So it can allow him to potentially have this more skill point positive nature, but since he's also able to provide shields to allies at a pretty consistent rate, it's going to also increase his crit damage by 40%, which is kind of crazy, I'm not going to lie, because right off the bat, he's going to get a hefty amount of crit damage. Once we look into his kit, there's something about this that makes it even better. Additionally, when he uses his follow-up attack, there's a 100% base chance to increase the damage taken by an attacked enemy target by 10%. And this lasts for two turns. So this will just be great for his own damage output to be higher as well as team members. Let's say if real quick you were to have a team of Topaz Doctor Ratio and Aventurine, right? Then all of them are going to be able to take advantage of the increased damage taken by the enemy target by 10%, as well as all the other things that he's already able to provide with his kit. So overall, this light cone looks pretty good in my opinion. I feel like it can definitely give you a good amount of shields just based off the fact you're getting a hefty amount of defense. And also the fact that his crit damage is going to increase by 40%, in my opinion, is just really good for that offensive nature that I've been telling you guys about when it comes to the potential of those follow-up attacks he has. And if we look real quick, we also have this new light cone as well, which is called Concert for Two. This is a four-star light cone, also the preservation class, and this light cone is so cute. Oh my gosh. Look at Sunday and then look at Rob, and this is such an adorable light cone. I love it. And for this light cone, it has a decent amount of defense as well with 463. Not as much, obviously, as the five-star light cone here that's about 200 and I would say 200 and about, yeah, about 200 ahead of defense, but it is a difference between a five-star light cone and a four-star light cone. Regardless, this light cone so far also looks pretty good. At Super in position 1, it increases the wearer's defense by 16%, and for every on-field character that has a shield, which as we know, he is team-wide shields, the damage dealt by the wearer increases by 4%. This is really nice because Aventurian is going to be able to just deal more damage as a result while wearing this light cone. And of course, if this light cone was more super imposed, then the 16% right here and the 4% would increase, which is awesome for sure if you are able to get this light cone in general. And that can definitely be honestly an alternative light cone, which I really like how with a lot of the light cone banners, they do try to include the four star or one of the four star alternatives that the five star can heavily take advantage of. So I'm personally a huge fan of this light cone right here. And then if we were to take a quick look at the other two light cones, we have Shared Feeling and Make the World Clamor. Personally, I really liked Shared Feeling. The reason why I really like this light cone is because you're going to get 
more outgoing healing, which is just really nice for just healing the team for more. And then the wear also when they use their skill, you will recover two energy for all allies. Sometimes this could allow you, especially if you have super impositions on this kind of light cone, if you're really close to getting your ultimate with one of your characters, but you're just slightly off, this light cone can technically or potentially make the difference where you're actually able to get that ultimate. I personally really like it. And then when it comes to make the world clamor, this light cone, in my opinion, is all right. What I don't per se like about the light cone is that unfortunately you only get that 20 energy when you enter the battle, which I guess can be nice if you're trying to get your ultimate just right off the bat in the beginning of battle. Maybe you're trying to go for a really, really low cycle clear. But honestly, there are other Iridition light cones that I would probably prefer. This was the breakfast light cone. I'd probably recommend that one, honestly, over this one. This one's nice, though, for the ultimate damage increasing by 32%. But once again, I'm just not a huge fan of only getting the energy at the start of the battle. And then that effect is basically gone. And now all you really have is the ultimate damage increase, which if your character is heavily focused on using, you know, their ultimates for their damage output, then I can see this being pretty nice. But overall, I mean, I would say the Lycone banner isn't too shabby this time around. Shared feeling, once again, I think this is really good. This four star light cone right here is definitely a good alternative if you do not get his signature light cone. And of course, when it comes to his signature light cone, there is quite a bit of value in this light cone as well. I can definitely see this being one of his best light cones just when it comes to the offensive nature that he'll be able to provide when he uses a light cone like this. And then real quick, when we look at his character preview, I could show you guys just some things that I wanted to point out as to why this light cone could be really good. For his trace leverage, which is all the way at the top, for every 100 of Aventurine's defense that exceeds a certain value, it increases his own crit rate up to a maximum limit. So that alone suggests that you want a lot of defense on this character. And the fact that he's going to be able to get crit rate from how much defense you have on him is actually really good. The reason why it's really good is let's say you did have that signature light cone that does give you the 40% defense as well as a good amount of flat defense just on it already. You're going to be able to get a bunch of crit rate on him and then you're also able to get 40% crit damage essentially at all times as well. So you're going to have a good amount of crit rate and good amount of crit damage before you actually get into relic main stats and also relic sub stats, as well as if you do have someone on the team that further increases crit rate and crit damage. So I can see him having a good amount of crit value just right off the bat if you do pair, you know, getting as much defense as possible on him, but then also having that signature light cone. As for the rest of this kit though, I will go way more in depth about this kit in more than likely either my next video or a video after it, because I'd rather give you guys a full in-depth review of the kit. But what I will say that is really nice right off the bat, just from his kit as well, which I mentioned this because a live stream has made note of it, is that whenever Aventurine uses his ultimate, he's going to inflict a debuff onto the enemy. And when any ally hits this debuffed enemy, which is called unnerved, their crit damage dealt to that enemy increases. That's really nice in general, just for the team being able to deal more damage, but also him himself. If you do have some follow-up synergy, that's even better. There are a lot of things in this kit that I want to deep dive into, but this video will just strictly go over the light cone. Okay, I am now on the other side of the screen and I wanted to show you guys some light cones I recommend as alternatives. So right off the bat, I would actually recommend the Moment of Victory light cone if you do have this one, just primarily because of how much defense you're going to be able to get from this light cone. The Destiny light cone is also an option you can go with as you can have the wearer's effect resistance increase even more. And then for every 100 defense that the wearer has increases the wearer's damage dealt. So it would be up to a 48% maximum damage increase. So this just can be really good just for having that damage increase overall. Aventurine is going to be able to hit for a good amount of damage. So this one can definitely be a good option for sure. If you plan to use Acheron with him, then, then the Trend of Universal Market Lycone is actually going to be a pretty nice option for you because you're able to increase your defense, which is really good from the Lycone. And then you're also going to be able to burn enemies when they do attack him. This will just be nice overall because now Acheron is just going to be able to get more stacks just from the synergy of this Lycone onto a Preservation Class character. 
And then, of course, as we know, his ultimate also inflicts a debuff. Plus, if you look real closely next to Topaz to the right of her, you can actually see him right there. So <laughs> maybe you should put this light gun on him. So overall, this option is there as well. A lot of the preservation light guns are actually pretty nice. Like all the ones that have defense in some fashion are really useful, at least when it comes to him as a character. Like this light cone, this is me. This one can possibly be used as well because you're going to, once again, you're going to get more defense and then the damage of the wear when they use their ultimate will increase by a percentage of your defense as well. But in all honesty, I'm pretty sure majority of his damage output is primarily going to come from those follow-up attacks. So that could be something to keep in mind. But if you do want your ultimate to possibly hit for a bit more, this could be an option for that. And overall, there are just multiple options you can go with when it comes to what light cones he can hold. I really do like the Destiny light cone as an option. And I also really do like the other four star light cone that is actually on his banner. When it comes to his overall banner value, would I personally recommend his light cone for people to pick up? And in all honesty, if you're going to go all out for him and you really want his damage output to more than likely be a good amount higher than with the other light cone options, then I would probably recommend it at that point because that crit damage is quite a lot. You're also going to get crit rate just from his kit alone. So that could make the light cone very worthwhile because you're going to get so much crit value just from having it equipped and then you're also going to get that 40 percent defense which means now your shields are going to be pretty healthy you should be able to have a good amount of shield uptime or potentially even infinite shields as i've mentioned before depending on how often the shield is reapplied i personally believe that it can be worth it in that case but if you're looking at him just for strictly the shields just being defensive as well as of course some of the light cones can still offer him some offensive capabilities then you could just consider one of the four star options overall so it ultimately comes down to if you are saving potentially for 2.2 like let's say you're saving for robin or you're saving for boo hill whoever you may be saving for trying to make sure okay do i get him in his light cone or do i get him plus another character i would honestly at that point probably just go for him plus the other character because there are alternatives that you could definitely use with him. That's just my take on it. Let me know if you guys are going to pull for it or if you're just going to use one of the alternatives and potentially use those extra Stellar Jade that you saved now or maybe Robin, Boot Hill, whoever you're trying to go for. I hope you guys did enjoy this video though and if you did, do make sure to subscribe, leave a like to support the video and I hope to see you all next time. Peace.